going on guys no guys here welcome back to another video uh, we're going to go over full backs and center back very briefly i'll have a full video on my channel later on but this is for no guys too i'm sure you guys are avid followers on my formations oh, i hope you are anyway um or maybe you just follow me for fifa for fifa knowledge um but this is just kind of a kind of a pre-release for my main channel uh, a video that's to come they probably see me use this formation, you know, 4-4, four, 4-2-3-1 four, four, or whatever, um, with full backs and center back. Why do I use full backs and center back? Well, the simple thing is they're better than actual center backs. Now, I'd rather play someone like Semedo on 6 chemistry or someone like Robertson on 5. Because, look, if you look at Robertson's stats alone, name me one center back in the game that's better than Robertson on those stats. The only person I can think of is Team of the Year Van Dyke. Apart from that, there's no one that comes close. We look at Trent again. We'll look at Trent another example. Someone like Trent. Naming one other centre back, even on 10 chemistry, that's better than base cars Trent. Apart from Virgil van Dijk. There isn't. And that's the very simple reason why he's full back and centre back. Simple. Two examples here. Sanchez for Tongan. Typical centre backs, probably the best centre backs in the Premier League. We're not going to use Van Dijk or Robertson, uh, I mean, or Otamendi Scream because they're like 250k, 300k, 400k. So we're going to use a cheap comparison which can be applicable for everyone here. Simple. Generally speaking, fullbacks got better distribution, but we'll ignore that for now. Height is very similar, um, and that's the most important thing. As long as the height is similar, or even though crossing... Last year, you couldn't do this because you needed height, um, or you needed agility and balance anyway. Uh, so game, sorry, don't forget last year, the game was all about, you know, crossing a ball. You needed strong centre-backs who were tall. As opposed to uh, this year, where it's not really about that. It's mainly about... Pace and agility and balance. I'm sure you guys know that. Now, compare them. 10 chem, 10 chem, shadow, shadow. They both need shadow because they're so slow. Um, I wouldn't even go for any. I mean, I'd rather use someone like, just to give you an example, I'd rather use someone like Ake. Uh, this Ake car is pretty good, actually. A bit on expensive side, but I'd rather use base Ake, like no joke, over most of these cards. Like, I'm serious. I'd rather use this card over these cards, but that's another story altogether. Now, um, look at the pace. The most important thing is pace. Pace, the most important stat for defender, doesn't matter what anyone tells you. You can have a winger or a striker, you can have a goalkeeper and centre back. As long as he's positioned correctly, he will get to the ball and he will tackle the ball if you press the tackle button at the right time. It doesn't matter if they've got 10 stand tackling. As long as their position is correct, they will get the ball. And that is why, very simply, it's very important to have someone with good stand tackling. I mean, good, good pace. Stand tackling is not that important. As you can see over here, acceleration, Walker wins. Sprint speed, Walker wins. They don't come close. Maybe Sanchez somewhat comes close, but again, the pace is more important. We got, by the way, you got him on seven chemistry because you'll be playing um, as a fullback in centre back. We'll get seven chem with loyalty manager. Put a sentinel on him for good measure because we put an anchor on him, it'll be a bit too unfair in terms of sprint speed. So, just to make it a bit more realistic, we're just going to put a sentinel on him. The sprint speed, acceleration, that's it. Walker's won. Simple. Now, someone like Cancelo is a good example of a fullback in centre back. Um, he's got good agility balance. The reason why I chose Carl Walker deliberately is because he's more of like a centre back ish player. I'll get to it in a second. Now, let's look at shooting. Generally speaking, fullback's got better shooting, so he's won there. No argument. Now, in terms of passing, generally speaking, most fullbacks have better passing, as you can see over here. Um, as it, maybe players like Ramos might be the occasional player that's better, but most fullbacks have got better passing than centre backs. It's a natural part of the game. Um, as you can see, again, Walker wins. Now, we go to agility and balance. Agility and balance is probably the most important thing as a centre-back. Um, the, the higher the agility and balance is, the higher you can run and jockey, the faster you can catch up to your opponents. Um, think about this very carefully. The best way I can imagine, or well, help you visualise this, is close your eyes. Think about your defending, okay? And just think, for example, Messi's got the ball and you're defending. And uh, just think that your defender... Has to catch up to Messi. Now, Messi with very high agility and balance, let's say he turns left or right. If your defender like Vertonghen or Sanchez turns, is he going to catch up to him? No. And that's why agility balance is the most important thing. Agility balance determines how good you feel on the ball when you have the ball, when your defender has the ball, how move, can he, how can he move with the ball, how can he run, does he run fast, can he turn quickly? All this is due to agility balance. That's why the high agility balance is the most important. That's important. Now, reactions again, most time fullbacks have decent reactions anyway. Now, just on pace, Walker wins, but as you can see, Walker wins on passing, wins on shooting, Ray wins on pace, wins on dribbling, completely composure is not that important uh, for a fullback. 
I mean, for a centre back, it is somewhat important, but it's not that important. It's not going to be. It's not like shooting a goal where you need 99 composure. The difference between 75 and 84, you're not going to notice that much of a difference. Um, so dribbling, he wins. Now defensively, this is where the, in the interesting part comes in. Now the most important stats are inception, stand tackling, and marking. Now the argument is, if you have pace and you run into the space and you get the ball, you're always going to win. If you have someone who's got 10 pace, it doesn't matter how good, they can have 99 defending. If they're too slow to recover or to be positioned correctly, they're not going to get the ball. That's the best way I can explain it. So I'd rather have someone who's, okay, stand tackling is probably the same, but lacks the deception and marking, but the ability for him to move. Now, if you park the bus, maybe a centre back is better, than you, better for you, maybe. Um, but... You're better off having someone who's a fullback, especially for recovery. Someone plays a through ball in behind. What are you going to do with Vatongan and Sanchez? You're probably not going to do anything. Let's be realistic. There's nothing you can really do with these players. And that's why it's honestly, it's no point using a, a center back in fullback. That is a very simple reason. Um, going over to uh, physical now, gem fullback score better pet. This is an example of Walker, right? Better stamina, normal, better strength, better aggression. Generally speaking, most fullbacks um, have lower strength, um, but strength's not important. Strength's not important because if someone has the pace, the strength's going to mean nothing. The reason why it means nothing is you have to understand this. Now, this is important for you to realize is that if someone has strength, okay, maybe they can outbarge a striker. But let's say you got Mbappe in striker, right? There's only a certain amount of time you can outbarge him before he runs past you. So, therefore, it's not important to have someone who's got good... Listen... Just imagine you have a defender. Let's just hypothetically think for a second, right? Let's say you got a defender, 99 strength, right? Bappe or Neymar's running alongside him. Okay, yes, he can push Neymar off the ball occasionally, which you may see visually. But what if Neymar has a fake shot past you? You're not catching up. Your agility balance is too slow. Your pace is too slow. That's why you need a fullback. If someone plays a through ball in behind down the wing and your centre-back has to go and reach the ball, what's your centre-back going to do? Well, unfortunately, he can't do anything because he hasn't got the pace to do so. And that is why fullbacks and centre-back are so important. We're going to get rid of a Tongan here because he is a terrible example. I would like to use someone like Can someone like Semedo or Cancelo. We're going to chuck um, Cancelo into the equation. Um, and we're going to put an anchor. Or actually, you know what? We'll, we'll, put, we'll keep the same thing. We'll put a sentinel on him as well. Um, Cancelo is a bit of a... a for me, is like a, a perfect centre-back for me. He has everything. has the physicality, the strength, the agility, the balance. It's a mixture of everything. Information, as you can see, all six foot, um, four star skills, three star weak foot, perfect. Now, obviously, player play stature and player body type is also important. I'm not doubting that, not one bit. Um, but this is a good example to use. Now, now again, we're going to compare this now. We look over here, pace. Okay, yes, Kyle Walker wins, but um, it's not that far off. Um, Cancelo is not that far off. So, again, this is just showing you an example. Why it's very, very important, or not very important, but why it's very, very, um, very beneficial, should I say, for you to have pace. Um, but as you can see, Cancelo wins anyway. Now, shooting, as you can see, Cancelo wins that um, anyway. You know, it's, it's again, it's, it's very, just, it's just very, very simple. It's not even, not even difficult. It's just simple to, when you're in attacking position, you're going to need better positioning to pass the through ball down the wing. You can argue shot power is important even though you're never going to use it. The most important thing here is just me just, I would say, finishing, positioning, maybe shot power. That's it. In terms of passing, as you can see, crossing, Cancelo wins. I know as a centre-back you're not going to cross the ball, but let's just say, for example, you happen to be on the wing or you might cross the ball outside the box. It is important. Vision, you're going to make the pass. If you're pinning your opponent in, in your box, sometimes you're going to pass the ball back to your centre-backs. You want high vision for you to be able to make the pass. That's why vision is very, very important. You know, think about this here. Let's say, for example, your opponent is parking a bus. This is ex think, for example, your opponent is parking a bus. You're outside his box. What do you do? Now, generally speaking, there's not that much you can do defensively apart from okay, maybe you could pass the ball back to your centre backs and build a play up, but they're not going to do that much. That's why it's better off having someone who's got good, better vision, better short pass and better long pass. So when your opponent is parking a bus, you can pass the ball to your centre backs. They can pass. They can do a driven pass down the wing because uh, they've got high curve as well. I mean, Davis and Sanchez with 30 curve. Is he going to do a driven pass down the wing? No. He's got good long passing or decent long passing and good short passing. What's the most important thing? 
So passing, Cancelo went to agility and balance. <laughs> There's no comparison. 82 agility and 9 balance. Probably one of the, the best combination, as I said, for a centre back. He's also got very good reactions, very good ball control, very good dribbling, very good composure. That means on the ball, he's going to be perfect. There is going to be no contest whatsoever with Cancelo. There's no contest whatsoever. That is why Cancelo is one of the best players in centre-back off chemistry. Now, defensively, you could argue interceptions he lacks, but Markin is not that far off. Um, yes, you can argue it's not that good, but stand tackling is, you can argue, one of the most important ones alongside Markin and interceptions. Heading accuracy is not important. People rarely cross. Slide tackling only if you slide is important. Stand tackling is very similar. Marking is not too far off. Interceptions, okay, that's the one that kind of lets him down. Um, but that is the only thing that lets him down. Now, physicality, he's got the stamina, got the jumping. Maybe lacks the strength a little bit, but he's got the aggression. So the idea is you can choose someone like Cancelo, who's got a bit of everything. But if you want someone who's got more of a stockier build, someone who's an actual center back, someone like Walker. But you never choose someone like Sanchez. Um, I never really planned this video. As you can see, I'm just talking from like randomly on top of my tongue. But this is just a perfect example of why you want someone like Sanchez um, not in your team and have someone like Walker and Cancelo over Sanchez. So even on seven chemistry, it doesn't matter. Even if, let's say Walker and Cancelo were worse than everything else, if the pace was important, I'd play him there. It's not abusing the mechanics. This is not real life. FIFA is not real life. You know, there's not real life is a different game. If you're parking a bus, I'd still recommend a fullback and centre back. I think even if you're not that good of a player, fullback and centre backs can recover better. Anyway, that's just kind of my thoughts on that. I'll have a full video explaining the actual benefits with visual examples, but that's just a video for now. Thank you very much for watching, boys. Take it easy and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.